Games like Battleships are a huge amount of fun in the family, but we've been looking at a new app, Jolly Battle, that takes the ship sinking fun and turns it into candy and cake battling. Once you've got the app downloaded, it's a simple case of choosing your character that you're going to play with in the game. Then tap the green button to play against other people, maybe on your own family or maybe online. You can search and find a game and then you're good to go. The first stage of the game is to get your cakes onto the grid. As you can see, you can place them where you think the other player might not get them. What I really like about this is each of the cakes has a real personality and they're looking around watching what's going on as you get ready to start the game. And there's a bit of extra tactics here because you have to leave some space around each of your cakes as you place them. If they're too close to other cakes, as you can see, it has a red outline. When it has a green outline, that means it's a valid space. And you can also rotate them there, tap the rotate button and get them in place. And that's a nice way to fool the other player because they can often assume that your cakes are all going vertical. When you're ready, as you can see, you press the start button and take your first go. You see on your screen the grid of the places that you've hit, and there you go. First time, first hit, that was pretty lucky. Now what you should really do there is follow the line of that cake, because it's not sunk then, so our daughter player here may be missing the opportunity to see the cake. The other player then takes a go, and it goes back and forth, just like a game of battleships. But of course, the iPad and the game is keeping track of who's winning and how you're doing. As I said, on the left you can see your grid and see what's been hit. And then on the right of your screen you can see the places that you've targeted. Now it can seem when you first start playing this that it's just a game of chance, but there's more strategy and skill involved than our players first realised. For a start you have to think about how you're going to spread out your, your targeting suites so you have a best chance of bringing down those cakes. And keeping an eye on which cakes they've still got left by the tally on the right, which shows you not only the number of cakes, but the size of each cake you've got left, is a good way to do that. You also need to spread out your shots so that you're not just clustering in one area. And then finally, as you place your shots, the other cakes near where you've hit um, will respond. And if you listen to the noises they make, you can get a really clever clue of whether your shot is close to an existing cake. And if it is, you can obviously target that area as the game proceeds. So you can see there's a lot more strategy going on here than first appears. But what's nice is that the whole family can get involved. So we had mum and two daughters here and they had very different skills and very different approaches but they could all play the game and enjoy it together. And there's that real sort of risk reward sense of jeopardy of when you place your suite on the grid is it going to hit? When you do, there's still that real sense of satisfaction that you feel like you've really achieved something. Then as the game proceeds, that action pops up because obviously you have fewer and fewer cakes left in your arsenal on the page. And obviously the enemy also has fewer cakes. So there's a real sort of seesaw balance of who's going to win. And the older the daughter here initially took the lead, but her younger sister was soon catching up. And it seems to be that you can really have that back and forth. So although one player can get into the lead to begin with, because of the simplicity and I guess the appeal of the game, it often swings back the other way. So it's hard to predict at the beginning of the game who's going to win at the end. And this keeps the players engaged and active and interested right through the game from start to finish. And we found when we played on paper, sometimes one, get, one player would streak ahead and the other player would lose interest. I think along with that, the graphics of the cakes that visually respond <laughs> as they get hit there, you can see it is a real appeal. And they're all looking around as if they don't want to get hit by these sweets that are coming yes. in. When you do, as you can see, a little pair of double eyes pop up and you can see you hit it. So you've got one, two. On the right there, you can see how many cakes they, they're trying to go for. And so they knew that this cake was a threer and by following through those three cakes, they could finish it off. And now you can see we really are getting more towards the end of the game here. Both sides are trying hard to hone in on those last remaining cakes. And it's hard to tell who's going to win. But it looks like we have a winner on our first ever game of Jolly Battle. Oh, <laughs> our yeah, older daughter yes. takes the day. Well played. <laughs> it wasn't just the kids though, both mum and dad were keen to get involved. And what was nice about Jolly Battle is that because it's not purely a game of chance and there is some strategy involved, you have to listen to the responses to where you put your different cake attacks. 
it means that it's a game that both parents and children can enjoy playing in their own right. And as you can see in our family, the battle soon hots up for who's going to win each of the rounds as father and daughter, mother and daughter go head to head. And what's been nice about filming and watching back some of this footage is to see the level of communication and interaction between the parents and the kids as they're playing the game. There's a real back and forth between each of the teams as they discuss what's the right strategy to do, where should they target their sweets, and how can they double trick the enemy from getting their cakes. And this is something that a good game will always do. Create a conversation that's as interesting in the room as it is what's going on in the screen. And certainly with Jolly Battle, there's loads of other things no, going no, on no, as our younger daughter no, like no, to no, count how many five, cakes six. she's got left. And yes. dad and daughter, maybe a little bit more competitive, really yeah, going for the, the win. But as they've realised, it's not just about sinking the most cakes the quickest. It's those small cakes, those little oneers that are the hardest to hit at the end. And those are the ones you need to try and hone in on if you're going to take the lead. It's all well and good sinking those big, long, three and four length cakes. But if you're going to have a chance of actually staying ahead at the end, you've oh, got to nice. get those tiny little one one off cakes to make sure that you're in the lead against the other player. And that is really where the strategy comes in. How are you going to identify and hone in on those single cakes? And oh, yeah, it looks like they've done it. And we've got dad and daughter winning. There are a lot of ways to play together, as I've said, via the internet, via Wi-Fi, via Game Center, or just by Bluetooth. The one we like best of all was Game Center because there's loads of achievements to unlock as you progress through the game or as you find all the little secret hidden characters on the title screen there. Yes! Playing against other people on the internet was a big novelty for the girls here too. Because there's no communication, it's a completely safe way for them to dip the toe in what it's like to play an online game. It also meant they could employ all the skills they've learnt playing with a family against people online. And this proved to be a really popular way for them to enjoy yes. Jolly Battle. Yes. 